Hello and welcome to the Performance Physique Podcast. My name is Arj and I am your head coach. This podcast is all about helping you with your running, your nutrition and your training. We take the jargon out of sports science to help you realise your goals faster than ever before. Let's get started. It's actually a really interesting topic because... Oh, I think she's amazing. She wants to really caught my attention this week. My story relates to a particular TV doctor. Week in Review. Absolutely. It's time for Week in Review. And that is basically where I invite two Londoners into the show, discuss their thoughts, their perspectives and stories that have caught their eye and joining me it's great to have them both back and it's been a while since i've seen them so i'm so glad that they were able to come into the studio firstly i have in the studio um arj terichelvam who is owner and head coach of performance physique you can get more details go to performancephysique.co.uk and also joining me in the studio i have frank loman who's a performer actor director and as I like to call him, our main man when it comes to the Eurovision. He is a proper Eurovision geek. You can get more details for him on franklohman.com uh, or frank underscore Loman on social media. Frank, oh, just great to have you both here. Hello. Hello. Thanks How for having us. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good now. Um, it's but, hot today, isn't it? Well, <laughs> you, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm perspiring profusely, so I do apologise. But you that. know what? We've had a week of like, I mean, I almost slipped in the rain the other day oh. mm. and then I, I, I felt really bad because I can Carry like one of those huge umbrellas okay. when it's raining, and I really did feel bad because I was like, I'm going to knock someone out. Yeah, but I, get I just by those all the time. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Someone's eye out. Yeah, and but then I, I feel bad, but I don't apologise because I'm like, I just don't want to be wet and yeah. sit in the studio with no, like you. you know a wet outfit, wet legs, whatever. Um, so it's nice that it's warm. It is yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something that we just need to focus on. It's I'm 14th of March. It's kind finally. of you know you never. I I always feel that you're never being given time to get used to it. Sure. You know, kind of, it goes from it goes from five to sixteen degrees, and you're like, how how is my how body supposed happen? to get I'll used that, to that? Frank. Yeah, I'll take yeah. That. No, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Can I just gloat? I've been to Grand Canaria. No, it's twenty one to twenty seven degrees. Wow. So thank you very much. Are you, what, you've got a lovely tan. And do you know what though? I appreciate for some people they'll be like, this is the most boring conversation. But I don't think it is because I think as Londoners, mm-hmm. our lives very much are dictated by the weather. Would you agree? Very with absolutely. That? You know, seasonal and affective disorder is a real thing. And yeah. I noticed that being a coach outdoors yeah. all day, all night, in the rain, in the cold. Sure. I need this sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you say that because some people think that actually, no, we're just going on about it. But I, I genuinely think as a Londoner, it impacts everything yep. that we do. Absolutely. Yeah. Travel, yeah. where we go, totally where agree. we don't go, totally what agree. we're doing with Let's our just plans. just stay inside and watch TV. Yeah. I mean, for yeah. me, it's like one of the reasons I went to Grand Canary you know, kind of when I was down with COVID and recovering. It was literally like, you know, kind of because in this weather, I don't want to go outside and walk. But I knew it was it was important. Sure. So I went to see my ex in Grand Canaria, and it was literally in you know, a kind of in in warm weather. Yeah. You do want to go outside. You do yeah. want to walk. You do want to do things. You do want to swim. I mean, you know, kind of and yes. things like that. So you know, kind of the it's absolutely you know kind of when it gets when it's cold and damp. Yeah. It's horrible. It's it is. Not very nice. It is. So we're we're gonna we're gonna lap up the sun as they say oh, as yes. long as it lasts. Exactly. Um, now both of you have brought in quite an array of stories, but I did want to throw one at you as well, which I've been discussing with uh, the listeners today, and it's all around this conversation on whether or not it's really worth going to university any anymore. Mm. Is there any point encouraging the young, the next generation, if you will? Um, even though I think we're still part of this generation, but you know, the next generation to to aspire to get a degree and go to university. Let's go mm. to you first, Arj. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm grinning a lot because I feel like there's a there's a kind of backhanded mentality here which has put really? me on the spot i'm a previous university lecturer okay oh <laughs> this is going to be contentious no it's not because uh, really <laughs> okay <laughs> because i i used to be the the individual you know the smiley one basically ran the university programs and would meet some of the students and talk about future students whether universities for them and i was very much on we're here to help those children effectively before they come to us um make the best decision for them and very often people were unhappy if i didn't suggest that they should come to university because now many roles don't require university Mm. i've been a an employer and i've been a manager and all those different roles and to be honest we prefer blank slates rather than rather Mm. than a university graduate the most important thing yeah i 
ever noticed from university and it does help that i used to lecture this topic but it was <laughs> it was research skills just how you identify what is a good source of information and how to critique it which okay. i think is yeah. so important when we're looking yeah. at social media these days sure so much what, incorrect advice just interestingly what what was it that you were a lecturer of like what was it sports science sports science yeah, yeah, so sports that's science. interesting that even you would because some people would say but even in sports you need a proper degree you need to know what you're talking about it's just specific to the industry that you want to go into okay so much can be done now vocationally sure and the limitations into our workplaces that as an employer well it's very nice you've got this degree but i want you to be able to do this 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 and this it's the hands-on experience yes. what, that can you're show me? what can you show exactly. me what have you um, done all right yeah. what's your thoughts on this frank well i don't have a single degree to my name and so you know kind of i i didn't finish drama school because um i went straight into after three years i went straight into les mis and so you're going to and only so it's a mentality you say that, that so fluently yeah. that's huge <laughs> to go into lay how do how do we say probably les miserables so les miserables. to go into a fantastic you know production yeah. like that that's yeah. huge yeah. at it was such massive. a young age and it was the, i was i was 19 and right. it was literally wow. um but it, it was the foundation of my acting career because um you know, um, only only much much later. You know, kind of when I uh, um, I didn't have a job, and I went to an agency in um, Germany where I was still living at the time, and um, I said, well, you know, kind of, can you find me a job? And he said, well, what 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 kind of degree do you have? I said. I don't have a degree, but I then unfolded kind of two <laughs> two A four pages of my CV and went like, I've worked with Roman Polanski, I've worked with Jim Steinman, I've done this. So wow. here you go, you know. And she would still insist, yeah, but you don't have a degree. Really? So to me, this is such an antiquated way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And I just find you know, kind of learning by doing. I mean, we've been talking about you know, kind of when I got into dubbing, you know, I'd never done dubbing before. You know, kind of I just literally got into it, found that I was good at it loved it and developed you know kind of t technique and everything from there sure so i think that is much more important than you know kind of a piece of paper that says you know yeah. kind of you've gone to university for six years um i wrote 100 731 2000 what are your thoughts on this you can always text 81 triple three start the message uh with london and you can email me shay at bbc dot co dot uk now um, i'm going to try and squeeze in one more well, story if we can before we go into um uh, a track oh let's go with yours because it's quite a light-hearted fun one with glastonbury lineup oh yes, are you yes. excited do you think this is quite a cracker then are you I, chuffed about the the lineup i'm this very time? excited because this is this is me back in festival Yes. Ah. <laughs> my brother was a, in a band many years ago okay. and i used to be his groupie jump oh, on the wow. tour bus nice. follow them around <laughs> and uh this came up this morning i've got the list in front of me and i was just like well i'm gonna have to find some tickets somehow you know yeah you've, you've got massive headliners which i think it's a record to have so many female headliners actually mm. this year okay um You've got Coldplay coming back for the fifth year. Never seen them before. That's a record, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. huge. But it's, I love Coldplay. Yeah. Even oh, yeah. if you're not love a huge them. fan, I think they're just a great performer. Yeah. They're yeah. great live band. Hands down. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, and then there's some of, some of the old indie legends like Two Door Cinema Club, Bombay Bicycle Club. I seem to love, love just Bombay Bicycle Club. Shania yeah. Twain doing the legend yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, slot. You know, yeah. I'm like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. It's exactly that. And then you've got um, Scissor, who's going to be playing Glastonbury for the first time. Of course, Dua Lipa. Yeah. Huge names. It's a really, really good lineup, I think. And I think it's going to be a very, very good summer if that's that's the way the the, the festivals are going to be at that level. Sure. Count me in. Yeah. Now, are you a camper or a glamper? <laughs> that's, the, that's always the next question, isn't it? With with glasseries, are you a camper or a glamper? Yeah. So true. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Go on. I, I was very lucky when so my brother were, used to get us the artist passes yes. to go. Oh, mate. Um, You're living it up. You're living it yeah. up. So yeah. he was in his band, middleman. They were doing fantastically, and I used to have all these experiences. And then the very first year, my wife and I went, and we weren't with them. And I was like, oh. <laughs> not, not sure. This isn't not that sure fun, enough. actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to pass. You're not a camper. <laughs> what about you, Frank? Are you a camper or no. a glamper? No. I'm a glamper. I'm literally, you know, gonna, gonna, the, the sheer idea of, you know, kind yeah. of sharing showers and toilets with Ooh. muddy, with thousands of other muddy people. I'm, I'm like, no. No, 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 thanks, no, 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 no. no thanks. No, um, no, I, I like that. Let's 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 continue with that as well. I'll, I'll um, find out more stories of the week with my guests here on Radio London. But what are your thoughts? Are you a, a camper? 
glamper or a glamper 0800 731 2000 is the number exactly that time for week in review been having a great chat today uh, with my two guests been speaking to Arj Terichelvam who is the owner and head coach of Performance Physique uh, so it deals with sports science coaching nutrition you can go to his website for more details Performance Physique .co.uk. I've also been speaking in the studio today with performer, actor, director and Eurovision geek Frank Lohman. <laughs> you can get more details uh, on Frank on his website franklohman.com. So thanks for staying guys. I know there was a story that you were really keen to discuss um, Frank which has yeah. been very personal to you and this is around of course the anniversary of Covid um, yeah. uh, which is quite something but in terms of when the pandemic took place, but how it's affected you for those people who've had long COVID and now long-term effects of COVID-19. As I wanted to, I think, um, just you know, kind of put um, put the emphasis on long COVID because I think you know, kind of it's still something that should be talked about more. Um, so the start of my year was not that great. You know, mm-hmm. I was in I was in bed with COVID for four weeks. And with everything, with uh, with uh, loss of loss of smell, loss of appetite, I lost so much weight. It was absolutely insane. I had nerve pain, mm-hmm. and just so anyway. So in bed for four weeks, which was bad enough. And once I started getting better and wanted to, you know, kind of start getting out and about, I realized that I couldn't put weight on my wrists, on my ankles, on my, you know, kind of crawling out. I've got a loft bed, so you can roughly imagine how that looks like when I try to crawl out of that Mm. bed. But I also can't sleep on the floor because if I sleep on the floor, I will never get up again. Mm. And so... um, uh, I went to the I went to my clinic, you know, kind of the one who looks after me for my HIV, and so I said, you know, kind of what's what are we dealing with? And um, they said um, they officially diagnosed me with post COVID arthritis. Post COVID arthritis. Post COVID arthritis, okay. which is a form of long COVID. Yeah. And so um, and said um, I was actually there this morning, so I've come straight from straight mm-hmm. from the clinic, and they said this morning they said, well, it may go away by itself. In time, you know, kind of, it may get better by itself, or we have to treat with um, steroids. We don't, we don't know, but it's. I tell you, I even though I may not sound as miserable as I was for the past eight weeks because I'm here, which always makes <laughs> me happy. But um, I've be been here. miserable, Shay. Mm-hmm. I've been miserable for 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 eight weeks now, and mm-hmm. and it's been grating on me because the pain. I have a very low pain threshold. And um, I mean, I'm being held together by um, painkillers and adrenaline at this and, point in time. And, and when you talk about this, some people maybe haven't even, you know, thought of the, the kind of long lasting effects of yeah. long COVID. So I had a look at you know, kind of symptoms of long COVID. So, okay. so, so, so it can be extreme tiredness. And I got this off the NHS website. Sure, sure. Um, extreme tiredness, feeling short of breath, uh, loss of smell, muscle aches. Then um, uh, there are other symptoms, uh, brain fog, chest pain or tightness, which is something I definitely have. Difficulty sleeping, insomnia. Yes, I do have that. Um, dizziness. Uh, I, I've, I've lost my sense of balance. And um, I have a massive tinnitus, which what's, is also one of the, one of, uh, one of the symptoms officially on the NHS website. What's going to be website. quite concerning, I guess, um, Arj, for you know, a lot of people is, is that what actually Frank is talking about there are many people who perhaps don't even realise that they've still got, you know, mm-hmm. long lasting effects of, of mm. COVID or yeah, long yeah. COVID. Mm. And with the kind of work that you do, have you ha- spoken to any clients? I just yeah. wonder, in, you know, the, the, yeah, the world is, that you're in. There is a, one standout individual actually for that. So during during the pandemic, obviously managing lots, lots of athletes who were getting COVID and then no one actually knew what the recovery period was like. So we had to just monitor heart rate and do our best with that. But one individual who was um national level swimmer he's fantastic but he has suffered the the ill effects of long covid no one could quite pinpoint things um and the kind of the unfortunate thing for him was when he was going to because he was part of the early trials for Mm -hmm. for long covid was that um because he was such a fit individual they're like well all of your scores are way way ahead of normal people okay so therefore his kind of support was we can't really do much for you because you're already so much fitter than everyone but for him Uh that's life-changing because he's like well i'm 60 percent of what i could do before 
but he's yeah. an elite athlete, so it's it's, yeah. it's, it's a conversation I think that definitely you know we've not had enough of. I'm just thinking about the last time we've spoken about it, and and it's important for me to say, of course, if you're tuned into Radio London, you should seek as. I appreciate Frank has already said, you know, medical advice from your GP. Yeah. But you can go to the website nhs.uk um, and uh, there's a whole detailed uh, page and information around long term effects of COVID. Just because of time, we're going to move on to the next story yeah. then, Arj. Um, we'll stick with, with the kind of sports world because you want to talk about the Commonwealth Games Stadium in Birmingham mm. uh, not being used for Olympic trials. There's an article in The Guardian which says, despite the £72 million yeah. renovation. What's your thoughts on this? I feel like we're repeating the past again. Okay. So we had the London Olympic yes. Stadium, yes, which was quickly reallocated to uh, West Ham. Um, sorry, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. There'll be some, some fans would be happy about that. But yeah, go on. And there was obviously controversial issues around that. And that was meant to be the national home of, of athletics. And then the, the Commonwealth Games, which was a huge success in Birmingham, mm-hmm. um, it's now been revealed because of the the financial struggles of Birmingham City Council that they're not going to use the stadium we paid seventy two million pounds for, and they're going to host it up in Manchester in a six and a half thousand seater um, kind of small stadium as as such, and it it just rings alarm bells of we we can't keep putting plasters or band aids or whatever you want to call it on mm. things to right. fix issues. Right. You know, we have to invest in these these sports, these things which are highlights of, of someone's year to go and see the Olympics on TV. Or you can't go to Paris because that's a long way away. Sure. Let's go see our, our best athletes in the UK, who are some of the best in the world, compete on our doorstep. You know, it's a, an hour and a half away from here. Do you, do, you, do you think that it's just a wasted or lost opportunity? Is that what you're saying? Both. Both. I think it's a complete waste um, that we spent £72 million on it. Hmm. I mean, it was a stadium which needed a lot of um, attention. Mm -hmm. However, we hosted a great event there in 2022. The Commonwealth Games was a huge success. Mm -hmm. And then it hasn't been used since. I mean, to the extent where the local club have been locked out of that stadium on occasions. So what's what's the purpose what's our vision as a, a society mm-hmm. um national governing bodies and and the government to do something with the most accessible sport in the country when times are financially difficult how are we going to inspire the next generation and it's uh, it, just to give you some context on that that um at the alexander stadium buckner has pointed out that it would still host the european athletics championships in 2026 yeah. um and he has said this is no disrespect to birmingham but the council went bankrupt and the commissioner's only have to deliver statutory services that means every single item of non-statutory expenditure has to go to the commissioners it's really tough on them and they are going through a big redundancy Uh, whether we like it or not the alexander stadium is not a statutory service for birmingham city council so it seems a little bit of politics is is affecting (laughs) essentially why that stadium is is to be used or not to be used and i think this is where things need to come from uh, big government as opposed to local authorities. Local authorities. Mm. That's this is a national event. Right. Um, it seems to be happening a lot that, mm. you know, kind of great sports venues are being built at great expense and then are being left to waste. You know, kind of, if you look at, you know, kind of um, Olympic stadiums mm-hmm. in um, Barcelona, for instance, that is that that is going to, you know, kind of, that is falling apart. Athens, similarly, you know, kind of, and it's, and it's, you know, kind of, so it's, I think the problem lies really therein that you're going to everyone prepares for this big thing, the sure. Olympics, for instance, sure. and then really doesn't think through. And I thought London did a did a reasonably good job for that with the Olympic Park and all the venues and how yeah. they were planned. Yeah, totally. So that was brilliant. But not every host city has has and, that opportunity. And you wonder, you know, kind of what, why? Because it's such a, like you say, wasted opportunity. Because I should um, I should state as well as I mentioned Buckner. That's Jack Buckner, who's the chief executive at UK. Yeah, athletics right, yeah. Um, who's referencing exactly what you're talking about Th- there is an article also on the BBC website if you'd like more details if you want to share your thoughts 0800 731 2000 I'll continue with my guests so I thought you know what this
this is actually a really interesting topic because oh, I think she's amazing. She really one story that really caught my attention this week. My story was relates to a particular TV. Yeah. 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 It's going to take away a lot of jobs. Week in review. Absolutely that. We are fast approaching the end of the hour. I just can't, it always flies by, I have to say this, every single week on a Thursday. Um, and basically, I'm joined in the studio with two Londoners. We delve into their stories of the week. It's been a lot we've been discussing uh, around health, well-being, sports. And we're going to turn our attention to one of my favourite subjects, film and music now. Uh, joining me in the studio still, we have a lovely chat today uh, with the owner and head coach of Performance Physique, Arj Terichelvam. You can get more details for him on performancephysique.co.uk. Also in the studio, I have actor, uh, performer, director and Eurovision geek, Frank Lohman. Get more details for him on franklohman.com. Uh, no surprises, Frank. It's you that wants to talk about the Oscars, <laughs> which I do love. Because people are still <laughs> reeling about it. You know, took place on Sunday. I know there's been a whole discussion of like the Kennedy energy, yeah. uh, of course, with um, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. But what did you want to say around the Oscars? I can, I know you love your music. Yes. I don't know about you, but kind of, you know, kind of, I mean, your brother oh, was in the band. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. So, You're a music guy. Yeah. I mean, you brought Glastonbury yeah, to exactly. the table today. Exactly. So, so Arj likes his music. You know, <laughs> I, can, I can geek out over a good original song, sure. an original winning song, a lot. Okay. Because obviously, you know, kind of, I mean, I found, I watched this year's Oscars for the first time, obviously, because we were able to. Yes. It was one of the main reasons because I don't have, you know, any cable channel. So I watched it. I thought the whole thing was a little predictable. You know, kind of, there was nothing really exciting. Okay. But when it comes to performances of original uh, songs, you know, kind of, that are nominated, I mean, who will forget the performance of Kiela Settle mm. a few years back? This is me from the greatest showman yeah where they literally Ooh. brought high, um, i mean a bunch of people onto the stage and it's such an energetic yes. song you know kind yes. of and i get goosebumps still you know kind of mm. so i'm a total music geek and 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 when it comes to so i wanted to throw into the round and you know, kind of what makes a good oscar winning song you know kind of does anyone have a favorite uh original song that won the Oscar because mine has just been replaced by this year's winning song, which is, which is what I was made for, and that is because and kind of I that is because I can geek out over lyrics like there is no tomorrow. The lyrics are beautiful. Clever Billie lyrics. Eilish and her brother yeah. Phineas O'Connell Phineas. wrote this. Didn't they? Clever, clever lyrics and kind of and what I love about it in particular is this whole idea of because I haven't seen Barbie yet, okay. but listening to this song. I know exactly what the film is about, you know, kind of, and that because she sings everything from Barbie's perspective, and it makes you, and that to me makes a good mm. uh, winning song, you know, kind mm. of that is so connected to the film, yeah. you know, and lyrics like, you know, kind of, um, uh, lyrics like. Um, Taking a drive, I, I was an idol, looked so alive, turns out I'm not real, just something you paid for. What was I made for? Yeah, it's so you know. res the, the Definitely, if, oh. if anyone, like you haven't seen the film, for anyone who, who hasn't as well, the lyrics are so attuned yeah. with Barbie. I and and it's so clever. You've not seen no. it either? Okay. Wow. Okay. And it's so clever, you know, kind of when she then, you know, kind of refers to Ken, you know, kind of when did it end all the enjoyment? I'm sad again. Don't tell my boyfriend. <laughs> it's not what he's made for. And you're like, it's so you know, kind of I get goosebumps mm. with with clever lyrics. So it was w a well deserved win then. Oh totally! I've been watching them. You know, kind of, uh, their their performance at the Grammys sure was yes. fantastic. Yeah, I love I mean, that. And there is something to be said about uh, siblings. Um, who are making music together. Um, Billie Eilish, when she was interviewed on the red carpet, they call it blood harmony mm -hmm. because brothers and sisters, I mean, listen to the chorus, for instance, you know, kind of their harmonies are insane be be and mainly because they're, they're related, you know, mm. kind of brother yeah. and sister, even e even mother and son. It's the nice to hear that because I'll be really frank. Whenever I think of brothers, yeah. I just think of the Gallagher brothers, <laughs> and I think of oh. Oasis. I'm sorry to throw that in there, no, um, but I mean there is there have been so many issues. Like, or maybe it's no, British. I, I don't know. I think of UB14. I yeah. think of yeah. you know there have been so many stories, at least in the UK, where family and mm, music yeah. and bands yeah. it hasn't really okay. panned out. Think, um, the Bee Gees, for instance. You know, yeah, you know, true. You, know, kind of, you may not like the style of, you know, kind of falsetto singing. Sure. But 
they as brothers they sound so alike in tune yeah and so yeah. you know so so for me there was a so you know kind of i just wanted to you know kind of know you know kind of any favorite so let's ask Arch, what yeah. about you well i saw i saw this was going to be brought up so i okay. quickly went on <laughs> online and I was like, well done Arch. right <laughs> did you hang back? well done what song do i know <laughs> i'm a sports guy I hope you did a similar any, research yeah. for eurovision <laughs> well, <laughs> what's this eurovision thing he keeps talking about <laughs> yeah and Obviously, there's loads of Lion King stuff on there, which is great. Yeah. Okay. But previous winner, La La Land. I yes. absolutely love that film. And that yeah. loves, I, I love that film. That film. <laughs> I adore that I film. I totally song. agree. I just loved all of that album. Um, yeah. What was Same this? Did Adele, am I right or wrong? Because I remember her performance. Yeah. Um, it was for Skyfall, Skyfall. Wasn't Oh, that it? was my other one on the list. I love yeah. Skyfall yes. for the best original song. Yeah, um, yeah I, would, I would go with Londoner. British yeah. girl lyricist yeah. Adele. I mean, I Why remember, not? Let's bring it yeah. home. Yeah. I mean, I remember Celine Dion howling, "My heart will go on," and it was literally, it was, it was quite insane. You didn't make the cut was, for me, I'm afraid, Frank. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I wasn't. Say, I, 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 yeah. I didn't say I liked it. You know, again, it was literally. I used the word "howling" quite on purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's quite, it's quite something though, because I think um, you may. You know that that phrase that people say is you may not remember what remember what a person does, but you remember how they make you feel. Yeah, I think that translates for film. You may not remember the whole premise of a film. Yeah, but you you'll certainly remember a song. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. sometimes for me, soundtracks make films. Mm. Absolutely, you know, oh, totally. they can make or break yeah, a totally. film. Totally, and I would say that's where you know Oppenheimer did succeed yeah. was in the soundtrack was the intensity yeah. in which Christopher Nolan used the music at particular moments and scenes and then lack of exactly I uh, found lack of I found music really interesting was important because I saw it in an IMAX theatre so, 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 so the sound was yeah. big yeah. and what I thought was really interesting when it went quiet exactly and when it went silent and that's when you really that took fit, me you realise yeah. um, just because of time I do yeah. want to squeeze in Arj your, your story well this is uh, Obviously on BBC, um, iPlayer. It's a it's a show, isn't it? A documentary. Why planes vanish? The hunt for MH three seventy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's the ten year anniversary of uh, the disappearance of MH three seventy. Um, I am of Malaysian descent. Mm -hmm. I have travelled on Malaysian airlines, so there's always been some kind of curiosity. I just like planes, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really interesting to see like an update over 10 years what has happened or yeah. in this case the documentary yeah. you know, on brand BBC yeah. um, but this, <laughs> well done, this, 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 Nicely do done. <laughs> this documentary really does outline just how little has actually been done uh -huh. by official investigators and governments etc but in the last two months or so it's really up to date there appears to be a, a glimmer of hope um, now not to ruin it but there is a little bit of new technology which just an individual researching on his own okay. has found some disturbances in radio mm -hmm. waves and radio communications in the exact locations in the exact time wow. period ah. which might actually identify he said there's a 30 kilometer um, location within the okay. South Indian Ocean and it, it's just a really, really well put together documentary, um, Interesting. which obviously what? then triggered loads of podcasts. Well, I was just going to say, what is it about um, like these, you know, either it's crime dramas mm. or disappearances or I guess fundamentally it's the questions that we can never quite get yeah. the answers to that we're so fascinated yeah, by. Yeah, it is that. It Does is it hunt. fall under conspiracy theory a little? I think there is definitely individuals Sometimes. who have conspiracy yeah. theories for it. Yeah. yeah, but I think also just as human nature, we what we we as humans just always want to get to the end. Yeah, you know mm, what I mean. Yeah. To know what is the end Don't result. Like cliffhangers. Yeah. And and the cliffhangers yeah. are great on a Netflix show, but you know there's going to oh, yeah. be a series two yeah. or a series three. Yeah. Whereas in real life, it's not like that. Yeah. Life is such that sometimes yeah. you'll never get the answer. Yeah. So yeah. sad to see the the you know the families, the relatives mm. of these yeah. individuals, and they are, yeah. they're just saying, I don't know what. To, what to do yet how can i memorialize my right. brother sister, how do mother? i mourn yeah exactly that's yeah. probably one of the things as to why just referring to as you've just mentioned here the malaysia airlines flight mh370 it disappeared with 239 passengers um, and crew on board back in mm. 2014 on the 8th of march 
that's why people have been still so fascinated by yeah. this yeah. story. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Um, so you've got to watch it. It's on BBC iPlayer. Just before uh, we say goodbye, Frank, you've got your, your next big show yes. coming up, haven't you? Give us the details. 20, uh, 21st of April, um, 8 o'clock at the Pheasantry. Doors open 6.30. It is because it is in Sweden this year. So we are going Eurovision. to serve you. Mm. Eurovision is, is in Sweden in Malmö for the, for the third time. We are serving you the biggest smorgasbord outside of Scandinavia. <laughs> and um, it's going to be great fun I have guests I have Ricardo obviously as always Ricardo yes. uh, Fernandez who you met my accompanist Fantastic but, but we will be yeah. coming in hopefully uh, yes, at some point and, and play and sing for you and just um, give you all the dirty gossip about <laughs> Oli <laughs> Alexander and co oh well listen it's what it's all about everyone loves European oh, so we would love to make that happen <laughs> so people can go to franklohman.com can't they all the for, details for that there, and yes. for, for more details yeah. um, and just before um, I let you go is uh, well our People can touch base with you online if they have questions. Tell us yeah, a little bit about, right. about yourself and well, work. Well, we've, we've got the London Marathon coming up. Yes. Oh, yes. With that weekend. That yes. weekend, actually. Yes, yeah, 20th yes. and 21st. So um, hopefully I'll be back speaking uh, about the London Marathon. Absolutely. Doing some work want you here south, to, talk, to talk about that. Excellent, yeah. And because this is the time now. We're four weeks away. People are building up for the big day. Right. Um, so are, you, are you down for giving some top tips? Or do you feel at this point people will kind of know what they're doing anyway? There is important tips to be done in this period of time. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like genuinely though? Because I, I remember when I was at Vaseline. uni. When I was at uni, I, and we're talking about university, I would always leave everything to last minute and I'd still get through. But I feel when yeah. it comes to your physique and training and sports, you can't do that. You've got to be in it for the long run. You Does that make sense? Things prepared long term. Yeah. And a few cues for race day. That's always yeah. the really? way, particularly mindset. Because we all know what happens when we get nervous. Yeah. The plan goes out the window. Got you. So it's about having something in place for when the plan does go out the window. Right. I think um, everyone should meditate before running because that would certainly help. It's vitally, yeah. vitally people important in, point. Yeah. Um, four weeks to go to a London marathon. Mm, We're going to have to exciting. get some top tips then for, so for Londoners. It. But for, are we talking about someone might be like, I'm seasoned. I know what I'm doing. Do you, can you genuinely, genuinely teach an old dog new tricks, as they say? That's how I make my living. Okay. <laughs> It's all right. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, listen, indeed. Frank and Arj, such a pleasure having you both here. Thank Thanks you for joining me today. So much for having and us. I can't wait to have you both back in to talk more about your personal respective work that you are doing. Um, that's quite something. I didn't realise it's four weeks away. Goodness <laughs> me. That's a bit of a reminder, isn't it, for uh, the London Marathon. Thank you very much for listening to the Performance Physique podcast. Don't forget, you can find us on Instagram. It's at performance underscore physique. You can find us on Facebook, Performance Physique. Or if you just head to performancephysique.co.uk, we'll do our very best to help you. It will mean the world to me, though, if you can share this podcast with one friend this week. Right, for now, take care. <laughs>